Good morning, good morning. I'm Ramona Phillips, your healthy mind strategist and world changer sister tribe leader. And I'm so excited about this opportunity to for my new show called Get It Right. So welcome to Get It Right, because on this show, we are going to get it right. We are going to get it right on this show today. Welcome, Princess. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, Global Global Design. I'm glad you're here. Kasika, everybody, good morning. I'm glad that you are here. As I was saying, I'm Ramona Phillips, your Healthy Mind Strategist, World Changer Sister Tribe Leader, and I want to welcome you to Get It Right, because on this show, we're going to deal with how we feel about trust, how we respond to our anger, any fear, not feeling safe, those feelings of it's not my, it's, everything is my fault. We're going to deal with the feelings of feeling victimized, those feelings of victimization. We're going to feel in, um, deal with those feelings of unforgiveness. And we're going to deal with depression and so many other things that we need to deal with. So we, what the main thing we're going to deal with is shifting our mindset. We're going to deal with the trauma mindsets. The key word here is trauma. Let's get rid of the trauma mindsets. We have to renew our minds because we've all been through some difficult things in life. And because of those experiences that we experience, sometimes it shifts the way we think, the way we see things, the way we, we respond and behave in our lives and in our relationships. So today we're going to talk about relationships, okay? Today we're going to talk about relationships. And the key word here is trauma. The key word here is trauma. I share with you guys in episode one that I was hit, that I was burned at the age of one by a hot, by a hot pot of hot coffee. By the age of three, I was hit by a car. When I was a little girl, I saw my mom in abusive relationships. Even when I was a teenager, I saw my mom in abusive relationships. I was held at gunpoint with my mother. We were in fires, more than one house fire. Okay, who goes through that? Thank God for the, the grace of God because I have seven brothers and sisters, six siblings under me. So like I said, the key word here is trauma. And we all have our own stories. We all have our own stories, okay? So anyway, I grew up not feeling safe. So that a lot of us can relate to that, right? Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I saw fussing and fighting and cussing when I was growing up. I grew in the I grew up in the city of Philadelphia, so I grew up in those you know those 60s and 70s. I saw my mom mistreated, like I said, in abusive relationships. So you know, and as a little girl, you tend or a little child, when you see your mom being mistreated, you tend to want to help. You tend to want to rescue. Okay, and you also feel powerless because you're a little child, right? Good morning, good morning. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much. So by the time, I'm now remember today we're talking about topics. So by the time I was 19 years old, I was shacking. We were talking about that word shacking a few days ago, and we was laughing about it. But anyway, I was shacking. That means I was living with someone and I was not married to that person. So by the by the time I was 19 years old, I was shacking with my 26-year-old boyfriend because to tell you the truth, I I wanted I was ready to you know, I was technically I was sort of like run, I wasn't running away from home. I told my mother I was moving out, but like I said I didn't feel safe at home, you know, as well. And I was trying to help my mother, but she was stuck in depression, so I didn't know what else to do but to make a decision to try to keep my own sanity. And some of you can relate to that. <laughs> so anyway, I was shacking, and um, we were together for seven years. We had two children together. Um, we never got married. I found out years later that he felt that marriage was too permanent. So remember, we're talking about relationships. So there were some questions that I was supposed to ask myself when I was in that relationship at 19 years old. Questions that I did not know I was supposed to ask myself, okay? 
Cause you because you know when you're when you're young, you know, and you dream about getting married. It's like I wanna get married and you know, you're like fourteen years old and I wanna have two children, a boy and a girl. You know how we get to dreaming. But anyway, I didn't know that there were some questions that I was supposed to ask. There were some things that I was supposed to pay attention to when I decided to get in a so-called committed relationship, okay? So, 19 years old, shacking with my boyfriend, okay? For seven years, two children, and then I find out that marriage was too permanent for him. What? You don't wanna wait seven years to be, and you know, find out you're with someone that's, you know, afraid to get married, okay? But he was an alcoholic too, and then he started using drugs, so it was time for me to stop shacking. <laughs> you know, and, and I stayed in that, another reason why I stayed in that relationship for seven years, because I was young and prideful, and I did not want to go back home. I did not want to move back to my mom, you know, back home. And I always felt that was just my perception that, you know, I, you know, when you move away from home, you don't go back home. So that was my perception. So I didn't want to go back home and I didn't do that. But for some years, I stayed longer in that relationship. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. You've been there. You can relate. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there too. So anyway, what happened was I ended up moving in with my brother for a year and a half. A year and a half, I moved in with my brother, and that's, it took me some time to get back on my feet, and I got a house, and I took my two little girls, and we lived in that house, okay? And it's still, and I ended up in a, a neighborhood that I didn't feel safe in, but that's all that I really could afford, but God took care of us. Six months, I forgot to tell you guys, so six months later after I left the, um, relationship number one, okay? my shack the one I was shacking with six months later I've met my husband but he wasn't the husband that God had for me <laughs> but I met I met a husband I should say I met a husband <laughs> so we ended up getting married and we ended, I mean we ended up shacking for a little while and then we ended up getting married but he wasn't the one okay so once again, I did not know that there were certain questions, certain behaviors. There were certain things that I was supposed to look for to see if this relationship was safe for me. So when I met him, I had two little girls. My daughter, my, my young, my oldest daughter was about five. And my youngest daughter was only about six months. And I and just so happened, I left the first, the first one the first one, my first boyfriend, when um, my daughter, the same day, the baby turned six months old. And that was another reason why I stayed in that relationship so long, because I had children by him. So, you know, a lot of us, we stay in, a lot of us women, we'll stay in relationships because, you you know, we have children and maybe we don't want to um, be by ourselves or, or we don't want to um, want to raise the children alone. Some men stay in relationships because they feel guilty. So they try to get the woman to leave them. <laughs> Welcome, Inspiring Decisions. Hey, Wendy. Welcome again, everybody. So some of us, we stay in relationships for the wrong reasons, too. So that's another reason why I'm going to do a, a part two and maybe even a part three on relationships. Because there's a whole lot to this relationship thing. And another reason why I stayed in those relationships for so long um, was because of learned behaviors. Remember, I grew up, you know, I didn't see the Brady Bunch family where people sat down and they talked things through if they had a disagreement. I saw fussing. I saw cussing. I saw screaming. I saw name calling. I saw fighting. Okay? So I knew I really didn't want that, but still... I got used to seeing things that, you know, that were unhealthy in relationships. And even for a minute, I tried to mimic that because that's all I knew. But that only was for a minute, okay? <laughs> and I realized I don't want, that's not what I want. You got to stop and think. Welcome, welcome.
welcome. You have to stop and think, is this the type of relationship I want to be in? Do I want to be in a relationship where I'm fussing and cussing and all of this drama is going on? This is one of my volunteers. Yes, I am one of the volunteer leaders for World Changer Sister Tribe. Thank you so much for, for um, putting that in the chat. So many of us stay in relationships because of learned behaviors. So the second relationship, I married him. We were together about 11 years. 11. So sometimes we tend to jump out the frying pan into the fire. So I call that relationship, I jumped out the frying, frying pan into the fire relationship. Because in some ways he was worse than my first boyfriend. Okay, And actually he was the one that tried to kill me. And he was in an accident later on, um, some years after, the, some years later, he ended up in a work-related accident, and he died five years later as a result of his injuries from the accident. Even after therapy and everything, I became a widow. So I finally get married, and then I look up, and I'm a widow. And I was also a very depressed widow, and I was depressed before I became a widow. <laughs> So I had some healing to do, okay? So this relationship thing is a big, big deal. Definitely need to talk more about it. You know, we have to remember that we are fearfully, wonderfully, and marvel marvelously made. But at that time, that time, I didn't know that. And I wanted to, um, just to show you how big this relationship thing is. And we need to talk more about it and learn more about it. Because there is a such thing as healthy relationships, but there's a such thing as unhealthy relationships. And many of us who grew up and saw things we shouldn't have saw, heard things we shouldn't have heard, we didn't quite know how to do this relationship thing. And many of us, we mimic we mimicked what we saw. Some of us became martyrs in the relationship, you know, taking responsibility for everything and not allowing the other person to take responsibility for what they needed to take responsibility for. Everything is not your fault. Yeah, we need to learn how to get it right. We got to get this relationship thing right. We also have to remember that God is a relational God. So we definitely need to get it right. God wanted a relationship, wants a relationship with us. And that should be our number one relationship, working on that relationship with God and learning how to have a relationship with ourselves. As we learn how to do that, it would help <laughs> us in our other relationships, right? Okay. Hey, Ramona Speaks, thank you for sharing. Please tweet this out. Please share this message with your friends. Also in relationships, some of us don't know how to how to detach. So we stay in relationships too long. So that's why I said I'm going to have to do a part two in relationships as well. Some of us hold on to old relationships. We don't know how to let people go. Some of us don't know how to end relationships, right? And some of us, we... Um, when the relationship, certain relationships have ended, we still want to be friends with somebody that we shouldn't even be friends with. Or let's just say the person, let's just say your, you know, your ex moves on and they get married to somebody else. Why are you still, we, we don't, you don't really have to be friends. You have to assess the situation and see if it's healthy to do that, especially if children are involved, okay? But some people just want to hold on to their ex hoping that their ex comes back, okay? So we have to know how to assess our own mindsets and do we have motives for hanging on, okay? So we don't want to have motives for hanging on. We also need to know how to start relationships, or we call it initiating relationships, and what type of relationship is it? We want to be honest with ourselves about what type of relationship we're getting into in the first place. Are we trying to make somebody a permanent partner that's not supposed to be a permanent partner? And many times we go by chemistry or our emotions, which usually gets us in trouble, which usually leads, we allow us, which, we, which usually we allow to lead us into some relationship that we shouldn't have been in in the first place, or we were supposed to be in it for five minutes and it turns into five years. <laughs> Or we were just supposed to just connect with someone and get a lesson. Because many times there's lessons that to be learned when we connect with people. Pay attention to the lesson. Sometimes 
you just connect with somebody and you hear something you need to hear, you get the lesson and you keep it moving. Instead of trying to make the per the person a permanent part of our lives. And that's what many of us do. We try to make the person a permanent part of our lives. So we have to know, we have to learn who is the person that's supposed to just come in for five minutes. The person that's supposed to come in and stay for a couple months, stay for a couple years. And then there's the person or people that we're in relationship with that we just stay in. We stay in those relationships until we die, but we have to know which ones, which ones that we're supposed to put in the balcony. You know, we call it putting it in the balcony. Some relationships don't belong right in the forefront of, um, you know, right in the forefront of your life. So some relationships you got to be able to say, you know, that was well, and I learned some valuable lessons, and I need to move on now. And 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 it doesn't have to be a bunch of hatefulness and unforgiveness and all that. We have to know how to forgive in our relationships. So what I'm going to do, guys, is let me see. What I'm going to do is give you give you a few tips, and then I'm going to read something to you. All right. So tip number one. Can I get a number one in there? Can I get a number one? Can I get a number one? Tip number one. Healthy relationship tip number one, okay? Because we want to get this relationship thing right. So we won't keep setting ourselves up for heartbreak for one, right? Or wasting our time because time is so precious. So don't be so quick to jump into a relationship no matter how good you feel about the person. Because feelings can be deceptive. Feelings sometimes lie to us. Feelings, you ever have that feeling with some people say, love at first sight. People need to stop saying love at first sight. What they probably should say is chemistry at first sight. Sometimes it's lust at first sight. <laughs> But for the most part, it's an emotional connection. But, you know, once you have that chemistry, chemistry is not the most important thing in a relationship. Once you have that chemistry, that's a good thing, but it's not the most important thing. It's not the number one thing. There's some other things we need to find out to see if it's even meant for us to be in that relationship, okay? So number one is don't be so quick to just jump in a relationship. I used to do that. When I met my 26 year old boyfriend, we met and before you know it, we were in a relationship for seven years. Can I get a number two in the box? Number two, tip number two, healthy relationship tip number two. So we won't keep setting ourselves up to be hurt, okay? Because we're still kind of going by our trauma mindsets. Remember you are worth the wait. Number two is remember you are worth the wait. Princess Fumi Hancock did her scope this morning and her number one tip was patience. We have to learn how to be patient. We have to learn how to repose ourselves, reel ourselves in. In other words, learn how to relax and be patient. So remember you are worth the wait. Take your time. We have to learn how to take our time. Take our time. Be patient. And remember that we are worth the wait. Start telling. If you're single, if you're single, don't be desperate to get married. Don't think about your age. Putting those limits on yourself. Put, that, put your singleness in God's hands. And remember that he's veiling you right now. And he's preparing you right now. And God loves us so much that he's protecting us. So when we're in that relationship with God, we know that God loves us and he wants to protect us. Okay? So he keeps that veil over us. And it looks like nobody's watching you. It looks like nobody, you know, is attracted to you. You're lovable. Yes, you are. And you're loving. Yes, you are. But God has you veiled right now. Okay, he has you veiled. It's almost as if he doesn't want anybody to see you right now. He's protecting you. Because he wants you to learn how to get this relationship thing right. Your relationship with him right. Your relationship with yourself right. 
okay? So we have to be patient and remember that we are worth the wait. Trust God's timing and his ways. It's very necessary. Yes, it is. Number three. Number three. Can I get a number three in the box? Can I get some more hearts, please? <laughs> a number three, please. Thank you. Thank you all. Be honest with yourself about your wants and needs. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. A lot of times we get in these relationships and we compromise and we compromise and we compromise. And it's all about, you know, and we're not supposed to be all selfish in our relationships. Okay. The right relationships. But remember, be honest with yourself. When you meet somebody and you're even thinking about this relationship going to another level, that maybe this may be the person for you. Take your time, like I said, wait, remember you're worth the wait, but be honest with yourself because what happens is because we're in these trauma mindsets, we're also in these codependent mindsets where we don't, we see what we want to see and we don't want to accept reality. Hey, Kasika, and we don't want to accept reality. So we need to be honest about what do we need in these relationships? If you know you're in this relationship and the person is a sick liar. I don't know about you, but I just can't. I can't. I can't stand being in a relationship with a liar. Okay, because that also determines trust. So don't you do you need to be in a relationship with someone that you know you can't trust? That very easily makes up stories. And doesn't say I'm I'm just can't I'm just kidding I'm just playing around I'm just playing. But the bottom line is you have to think about well what are your needs? What are your needs in the relationship? And please don't play wifey. That's a sidebar. Please stop playing wifey. I played wifey when I was 19. Remember, whenever we're shacking, we're playing wifey. And wifey usually doesn't become wife. Because we've already given so much of ourselves in the relationship because we didn't think we were worth the wait. And then he's gotten comfortable. And some women don't want to get married. They get comfortable too. Sometimes the man want to get married. And he doesn't understand why you won't marry me. Because she's gotten comfortable. Okay, so we want to get this relationship thing right. Step number four. Tip number four. I'm sorry. Tip number four. Tip number four. Can I get a four? Can I get a four, four, four? Thank you. Please take the time to heal. Please take the time to heal yourself. Allow yourself to heal. Don't worry. God will cover you, like I said, until you are ready. Be patient with yourself. I already said that. You are worth the wait. Unpack those bags. Give yourself time to heal. Unpack those bags. God will help you. Be teachable because there is always lessons to learn. So look for the lessons. While you're healing, let God heal you. When I divorced from my... I forgot to tell you guys. I, I got married in the second time. And my second husband had borderline personality disorder. So I was living with two men. <laughs> the rageaholic... And the other guy, you know, was pretty nice, took care of me pretty well. But I was also living with a man who was stuck in his trauma mindsets because he had been abused by his father, who was a pro police officer who had abused him and rejected him and did all kinds of things to him. So he would go into a rage. And I would notice that his personality would shift. And what would happen is he would hold things in because he wouldn't want to control everything because that made him feel safe. So being controlling made him feel safe so he would explode. So I came home. So when we, when we um, separated and when we divorced... God was showing me that I'm giving you some time to heal. So God kept me veiled. God kept me veiled. 
and I knew I needed some time to heal. I paid attention to what I was going through. So you got to pay attention to your feet. Pay attention to what you're going through because when those feelings come up, you need to be able to identify, is this something I need to take a look at or is this just me feeling insecure and I need to just get rid of this? So what would happen was he would text me and I would feel the anger coming up. I can feel the anger just coming up. So I, I set boundaries and I would not allow him to contact me. Okay, and I'm talking about for years. So, and I took that time for myself to heal. So remember, number four is please take the time to heal. Okay, you just came out of a relationship or you're just going through a divorce or you just got divorced. It's two months later, it's not time to be in another relationship. Not unless you know it's from God. And even if you met your husband or your wife two months later, right? Even let's just say you got divorced and you met your husband two months, six months later. That doesn't mean it's time for you guys to get in a relationship. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Pay attention to your, your needs. But you know what <laughs> i told you i thought i told you guys before in 1992 i decided to get some counseling right and i remember they told me because they knew my background and everything they told me to wait one year before i get in a relationship i was like what yeah right because i was used to being in a, a new relationship at least by six months at least by six months and they told me wait for a year well guess what I found out later that they knew what they were talking about. So we must remember that we are worth the wait and take that time to heal, okay? Did you learn anything? Because I'm getting ready to wrap it up. I'm Ramona Phillips, your Healthy Mind Strategist. I'm so grateful that you guys joined me for Get It Right. So I'm going to do a part two to this relationship thing because it's a big, big thing. Our whole life depends on relationships, even our business relationships. We need to know how to do relationships and we need to know what type of relationships we're in. Okay. So I'm going to make a few announcements. Um, where I'm a part of World Changer Sister Tribe. So those of you who are on here who are not a part of World Changer Sister Tribe, go to World Changer Sister Tribe and join today because you're going to love being a part of this tribe. We are also having some fundraisers right now because we are building a youth enrichment. We're a part of, we're a part of building, helping other peoples build um, an, an enrichment center in Nigeria. It's called the Odessa Adumari Project. Odessa Adumari Project. It's going to be an enrichment youth center in Nigeria because they don't have the education and some of the opportunities that we have in other countries and in the United States, okay? So we're going to help some other people. Thank you for putting that information up there. So we want you guys to go to these websites and make donations. We have, a, um, we have an auction for these beautiful pins that one of the members, one of the leaders, created her name is tony parker we also have a download a song download and if i have time we also have a song download you guys want to put up that information for the song download we want you guys to download this song do you have that do you have that in front of you payhip.com slash princess of suburbia foundation the song is only $4.99 so $4.99 to help us build a school in Nigeria I think that's a wonderful thing that's a wonderful thing you want to be a part of something bigger than you okay so I have to go I'll be back next Wednesday at 9 CST 10 EST. Okay. I'm Ramona Phillips, your healthy mind strategist. Thank you for joining me at Get It Right. And we're going to get it right, y'all. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for joining. Bye bye.